enforced. Like and it will be McNeil. For sure. We're going to see quite a lot of net play today. Neil a fine volleyer, not too much volleying I suspect for Graf, who likes to rule from the baseline. Thirty fifty. Yes, good serve into the body. Quite a lot colder today, I must say. Look sensibly wrapped up against the weather. Let's hope the rain wear isn't necessary. Miss McNeil. First game. So Laurie made a good start there, Virginia. She didn't look at all uh, tense or nervous. Despite the fact that she did serve uh, a rather unlucky double fault in the first point because it hit the tape, her serve is so good, but she does get nervous. She has always been a slightly tense player. So if uh, she can keep her first serve going well, and you can see that uh, it was effective serving into Steffi's uh, body, she is going to really uh, be quite a contender here. The, the really interesting fact to me will be to see how Steffi tries to take the net away from Laurie. Laurie will come in on every conceivable chance. She might even be chipping and charging on first serves if she's given any sort of uh, chance by weakness Time. in Steffi's serving. And perhaps Steffi will try to come into Ms. the net more to herself. It's very gusty out here, so it's going to take a little while to adjust. Love 50. First service. See from the from uh, Ralph all the time, Virginia. Yes, and if she can open up the court with a cross court shot. Fifteen thirty.
15-40. Have a little lob that. Never a mistake to lob. When it's a little windy. Okay, Miss McNeil. Two games along, first set. Well, there's a score line that you might not have expected to see, but not altogether surprising. Steve Graf showing all the signs there of being a little bit nervous and pushing that last ball rather instead of hitting it. The problem here with the wind is that it tends to swirl around. It isn't consistent in direction. That's true of most bowl-shaped stadia. Fifteen thirty. It's just those sort of volleys where the wind holds the ball and it doesn't come to where your racket is. Houston, where Jane Wilkerson discovered her, along with her sometime long standing doubles partner, Peter Garrison. Okay, Miss Brown. Ms. McNeil leads two games to one, first set. Steffi seems to be timing her backhand better already than the forehand. She takes it so early and of course she's criticized so much for having predominantly a slice backhand, but on grass it works for you. And everything was right about that. She always has taken the ball very early on the backhand side. One of the criticisms on the forehand is that she tends to take it late. She almost gets the elbow too far back and has to rely on her powerful hands to get the racket through in time. Yes, it's the sort of natural shot which, being as good as it is, you wouldn't ever want to change. But it's not the way you teach anybody to play. We always teach to get the racket back early. And that is sound advice generally, but for somebody like uh, Steffi here, it's always been hit that way. Time. And it's always been a uh, match-winning weapon. And so you leave well alone. Coached by her father, Peter, from the start, and now with uh, Heinz Grundhardt of Switzerland. Oh. 
There's Heinz Gunthardt with a cap in the front row on the right. And on the left is Heidi. Love 15. Yes, there's Heidi on the left of your picture. That's the star. And uh, Klaus Hofsass in the green top, who is the gentleman in charge of women's tennis in Germany. Second service. Fifteen all. So that a typical draft rally, running around to plout a forehand, deep into the opponent's back in corner, beating McNeil there really just for pace and accuracy. is the weaker side of Laurie McNeil and Steffi does seem to be trying to serve mostly there. Games all. Only 13 minutes of the lap, four games played, they're certainly playing at fast pace here and not taking even the 25 seconds allowed between points. I think a while ago I must have said 30, of course that was changed a couple of years ago to 25. Fifteen long. Just forehand here. That the second serve, of course, bounces marginally higher, so that gives her a chance to thump it. Some of the balls at the side have been staying very low. Fifteen. 
1350. Purposeful today and calm. And even this uh, last week, the rain is beginning to hold. It's spitting. First service. First service, she gets beautiful extension on it, and her preferred serve, or her most effective serve, is the swinging one up to Steffi's forehand. Two first set. So McNeil having lost the break which he'd achieved in game two. Nevertheless, leads again after a good service game. It always seemed to me, Virginia, that here was a player when we first saw her with enormous potential. I mean, she could do everything, she could both, she played well from the back, and yet she's never quite won the major titles. I think the reason for that was uh, she was always uh, very nervous as a competitor and she used to get a little shaky on second serves. Somehow, as she's got a little older and I suppose the expectation has gone and she's just got into her nice little routine, she's learned to live with her nerves. And although you see her looking very nervous at times, it doesn't seem to phase her too much. Time. She is almost exactly the same age as Zena Garrison, a month or so younger. And she was very much in her shadow for a long time. And I think they always find it difficult to play each other, although Laurie's been the one who's uh, been winning a bit more often. Quiet, please. Thank meetings. you. And she's changed her coach now to a young man called Mervyn Webster. So all these factors seem to have calmed her down and produced more consistent consistency. into error by the approach to the net, you see. It's the approved method of feeding Steffi on fast service in against the backhand. Not easy to achieve that. in because that ball was so short the beautiful approach shot maybe she didn't get herself quite in as good as position at the net but still it's the way to go as you watch her on the volley she doesn't quite stick her racket out as far in front as is the, the best but that'll do she was pleased with that Oh, it's 
looks lovely. Tonight. Talk about a natural volleyer on this side of the net. That racket stuck way out in front, just clambering all over the net. Gorgeous movement she is, has. Four games to two. Rather nice that as Laurie came towards our commentary box, which is in the corner just to here. He gave us a little smile of quiet uh, satisfaction. Left row to serve. Well achieved. Fifteen. Left. So there was the attempted top spin back, and now if you look at her on the practice court, playing with Nancy Kintouch and others, you'll see her hitting a succession, a whole stream of stunning backhand with top spin. She used to do that with Pat Osnazzle, but has found it always very difficult to bring that shot to the match court. Fifteen thirty. Oh, what a good length third. Surprising step it. Just asking the umpire to confirmation. Spite in her forehand and you know, really attack the ball. And that's really the best way for her to go to get her adrenaline going. Because she's really decided to nail it, and she does. Great shot. Of course, in her match preparation, Virginia, Graf isn't entirely conventional, is it? I mean, here she is. She lost to um, Pierce in Paris. <laughs> nice alliteration there. And uh, hasn't had a match since. It's hardly the way that most people would want to prepare for a major championship. She's always uh, fallen into this pattern of after the French going home for a bit. Oh, well, she comes to London to practice on grass, then she goes home for a birthday, then she comes back. And she practices a lot at Arangi in Iran. But you are right. She doesn't give herself any match practice. She'll be playing sets against various people and certainly against uh, Heinz as well. Uh, it certainly worked for her in the past, but I think that she must have been fairly 
unhappy when she saw the first round uh, draw. Laurie McNeil is one of the players who really Time. intimidates you on, on grass. I mean, she comes in, she serves so well. She's, she really is such an elegant. Uh, As a mover. reminder, ladies and gentlemen, no flashlight and photography during play. Thank to you. Be streaky, so you're not absolutely sure what to expect. Steffi is having a miserable time with her serve, and really quite a miserable conditions, to be honest. Change of tennis balls, three four. Love fifteen. Fifteen. Interesting attempt just to change the pace. Snatch it back, back in very, very late preparation. Forced error. Thirty. The previous point she should have come into the net and even though this was a second serve and she got a little lucky, it, it did a lot more for her than hanging back at the baseline. Four games on first. And a little clenched fist and a stamp of determination on proceeding to hold serve there. 
not serving very well at the moment. The percentage of first serves in is hovering around 40 and very low. Both of them are struggling with the wind in the first serves. The Norris is a little bit better. And it's drizzling again. Thirty. on the rise graph and knowing that perhaps the serves aren't always that deep the second serves there's the odd bit of rain falling at the moment nothing too serious but uh, let's hope it stays that way Five games to four, first. So McNeil really playing quite convincingly, and at the moment it seems to me, Virginia, and that last point will illustrate it, tying Graf up on the backhand. A rather defensive reply there, well reached. Half volleyed back to the backhand, and that a real rushed shot again. There were in the previous game of Graf, which he finally won on a serve. The same point we're looking at now with McNeil finding a way in, having to play a rather awkward little half volley here, which he does well to control very sensibly back to the backhand, and Graf missing there to the relief of McNeil. Well, Steffi really making the wrong choice of shot on the second backhand. She should have just uh, been satisfied to dink it over the net and then try to do something on the, the next point. But, but the problem now for Steffi is she hasn't won her serve on the far end under the Royal Box. And uh, Time. it's now 4-5, so she's not going to be walking up with the largest amount of confidence to the serve. Although her serve is picking up in pace and a bit more consistency in uh, with her first serve. Gradually, I suppose, getting to understand what the wind is doing to the toss. Let's hope that the wind blows away these spots of rain that are still falling. 4-5. Oh, 
really dug deep into her pride there to chase that ball down. She hasn't been making those. That was a great effort. goes up to the net and the more success she has obviously the better she'll get so she's just got to keep persevering she's going to be in real trouble if she doesn't venture up to the front of the court Five games all, first set. Five games all and draft. Trying to be firm and secure and trying to make herself go for her shots. More too familiar sight. As a gentleman, the mark, I think. That fight, it is drizzling quite steadily now. And uh, unfortunately, the forecast that I saw anyway said that this sort of weather was likely to be with us all afternoon into Mittenshire. And now the players are going to have a, that awful interruption which the Guinean no player likes. Well, what a terrible time to have a break. The reason they have to stop so quickly, although at this moment it doesn't look as if it's spitting at all, is because the courts are very green at the beginning of the tournament. And they just uh, don't absorb any moisture. Well, there's a site that we haven't seen this year. Thank goodness until today.
two minutes. One minute. So the five minute warm up almost complete in just the serve routines. To complete that warm up and it was very noticeable when they started how windy it still is and the ball was swirling around making them uh, snatch at the ball as they were hitting ground strokes to one another. And that was certainly one of the features of the first period which lasted just 38 and a half minutes time and we've been off court for something like an hour and uh, 26 minutes now and that was always I used to find uh, I used to hate interrupted matches finding what to do in the locker room I think that's a, a huge problem and without question I would think that it was more of a problem for Laurie McNeil, knowing that she had to come back and serve, and if she didn't win a serve, change the balls, please. Balls in. The set. So it never is an advantage for anybody, but I think uh, maybe a little worse for Laurie. They warm up for their five minutes with other balls, and now they'll go back to the balls that they were using in the match. At least these days, you can get a five minute warm up when you've had a, a, a rain intermission. So the match balls are now out. McNeil. Just so a reminder, ladies and gentlemen, no flashlight photography during play. Five games all. Miss McNeil to serve. And the fast start, obviously, essential to both. Fifteen long. Eleventh time, incidentally. Thirty long. And it was the backhand of Garth that had been vulnerable in the early part of the match.
We leave no doubt we have the forehand returns. Now, he yeah, really needs to serve to that backhand. The service. Game is with me. Mr. Peel leads six games to five, first set. Well, that rather revealing, Virginia. Four points won by McNeil, all on backhand errors. Forced, of course, by the good serves. And the two winners from draft on the forehand. Well, you'd expect that, I suppose. Uh I suppose you would uh, expect that from Sophie, although I feel that uh, she doesn't uh, get worried too much if she misses her backhand. If she starts having a bad day on her forehand, I think uh, her confidence really uh, gets uh, shaken. And that is very often the case with players who have a tremendously strong shot and the shot that they depend on most. If that they're having problems with, then the whole of the rest of the game will fall apart. Her backhand, I think, uh, although it's not her dominant shot, I think she can live with a few mistakes on it. I remember, you're absolutely right, I remember at Lipton last year, he was going uh, a year and a bit ago now, a forehand against the centre of Vittorio, which was disastrous. Very much so that Hans Gunthardt was ready to shoot himself afterwards. Five seconds. Love 15. A rather tense start. I don't think a natural volley would have missed that. No, I think she just gets over anxious. I mean, she ran right through it, and the wind is doing all sorts of odd things. She should have had a racket up. Love 13. Well, nasty moment now. Fifteen thirty. Fifteen forty. Well, a rather rushed forehand against a ball that had held up in the wind. And two set points. For Laurie McNeil. Well, the champion finding champion's form at exactly the right moment. A top spin back in pass.
game for Santis McNeil. Seven games to five. <laughs> well, what a surprise. They're not all together because we knew that this lady would be quite capable of pressing Steffi and Steffi herself. In the Second set. Ball. She had one. Miss McNeil to serve. Meeting all the two years ago. And this their first meeting on grass. Quiet, please. 45 minutes of actual play. Second. Sorry, Mike. 15 just Wonderful at the net. She's so light and just does the least amount of work to get the most results. Thirty long. Well, she's going to have to really get hold of her self-belief here, Ralph. At the moment, the wind is troubling her, so is McNeil. Total commitment required. When she does hit a top spin on the backhand, it usually is on the passing shot, which is the right time to hit it. Finally, literally the first one or second one, she's got her racket under the ball. Forty fifty. First game, second set. First set, Miss McNeil. So the champion in dire trouble at the moment. And in any way, the question I suppose everyone will want answered is how significant was that double fault at that set point? I think very significant. Uh, I think more so on the fact that she's not serving very well. In the past, or in the recent past, when some of her game has been a little bit astray, when she's been making errors on the forehand, she has relied to a huge extent on her booming first serve. But she hasn't served uh, an ace yet today, and she has had a very low percentage of first serves, uh, about 51%. Uh -huh. and, which is, and the wind is so miserable out there that she's not really getting a good hold of the ball when she does throw it up. So she cannot rely on her serve. So nothing is easy today. Time. Well, we've seen Steffi in awful trouble before. I remember that final, the first two won against Neville over a second two love down to was, then storming back to win. Novotna, last year in the final, Sabatini, a couple of years earlier in the final. She came through. Love her. Love 15. She's got to come in behind some of her serves. The return was up high. And then once it hits the ground, anything can happen in the swirling wind.
15 over. Of course, one of the problems with Ralph always on a windy day is the high toss she has. Thirty fifty. both know that that was a fortunate point for, uh, for McNeil. Thirty forty. What a chance for the here. Thirty forty. Advantage, Miss Graff. Game, Miss Graff. One game all, second set. Uh, Steffi still not coming into the net quite as much, and you can see that when she does come in, she has won just about every single point. Like Neil, of course, coming in three times as many times and winning a, a good percentage of those. Love 15. Well, in the past, she has failed to fulfill the considerable potential she's always had, largely because of lack of self-belief, a real burning knowledge that she's as good as some of the higher-ranked women. Fifteen all. And she's almost apologetic for her own good play at times. Basically shy person. Fifteen thirty. It wasn't an easy shot, but she was nervous on that.
Rob is working actually very effectively. It's definitely a little bit slow to see that one. And the lob here, not quite high enough. It's another time that Steffi won a point at the net. Two games to one, second set, first set, Miss McNeil. Well, just a moment ago, McNeil had a break point for a two love lead. And now, here, she's lost her serve, a service breakdown. How quickly things change? Well, probably precisely because she thought she could have uh, broken serve before. She's now got a little edgy, excellent serve there. Steffi just doing well to get it back. It became a difficult shot. This one, look how much that moves. She had to just they're both having to sort of jump and a jerk and try to get a good grip of the ball sometimes when conditions are like this you really need to go out after the match and hit some balls indoors where there's no wind where you're getting a, a consistent bounce just to get your stroke time down. because literally every ball you are having to make major adjustments to your stroke production so the champion showing champion flair. One or two nice topspin backhand passes. He's never lost the determination, Steffi. Now forcing herself to flow a bit of a two one. Fifteen love. the right ball to come in although she didn't get it very deep and that one she did nothing with but look at the room again ball moves away from them well you don't often hear a football call against Steffi More together, more confident that back end. Forty fifty. That high cost is a big penalty on the days like this. Game is graph, new balls, please. <laughs> Scraft leads three games to one, second set. It seems to me that Steffi has come to terms with the conditions now and really knows how she can hit through the wind. She given evidence of it in that last game. The jitters, I think, perhaps now a little bit more under control. Fifteen long. Mm, just a little questioning look at the linesman. Wondering whether that was a fault.
15 all. Fifteen thirty. The interesting thing is that the ball is bouncing up quite well, despite the fact that it's only day two, and it has been so very damp in the run-up to the championships that the normally drying period and firming up period of strong sun has been very, very short this year. Thirty. That bounced up quite high. Fort was actually cut, rolled under the covers. Juice. Cold of late. Steady. Spent the last two weeks practicing. First service. Advantage, Miss McNeil. Looking through our commentary box window, the just lightest of misty rain is falling. Well played. Hey, Miss McNeil. Graf leads three games to two, second set, first set, Miss McNeil. Well, she did well to come out of that with McNeil, but I'm afraid it looks from that shot as if we're going to be off court any moment. In fact, uh, let me see what I just saw pop into the corner office there just to summon his team, and I think they'll be out in a second. I hope they are because uh, we Ladies don't want any... Play suspended. The play is suspended. We don't want any moisture, unnecessary moisture, to fall on the surface because that needs to be dried off and the covers are removed. And what a marvellous team it is, this. Everything done at breakneck speed. They have to remove the chair, lower the net and the posts, take all the other equipment off the court so that the cover team can race across. And here they go any moment now.
at last. What a patient crowd this has been. We've had the Mexican wave, we've had the relentless hand clap, we've had a bit of why are we waiting? And the waiting is over, the players are back. I always admire the stoicism of the British sporting crowd, and they are wonderful in their patience. So let's return to the court and see how Steffi Graf is looking for this third session of play. For those of you who weren't with us earlier, they played for some 38 minutes in the first session, and that took us to five all. When they came out again, it was this young lady, Laurie McNeil, who won two games running to take that first set from five all. That was after 45 minutes of actual play, 7-5 for McNeil. McNeil then won the opening game of the second set and had a point to break the draft serve, and I think the only way that I felt at the time that that was a key moment. Had she achieved the break and taken a two love lead, who knows, she might be poised on the verge of victory now, but instead Steffi held and then broke McNeil, who served a double fault in that game, and then held her own serve, so that was 3-1 to Graf, and just before the range returned, McNeil held serve after deuce, so at 4.38 it was, now 6.15, so just over an hour and a half ago, they left the court for the second time. They've been playing for just over about an hour and five minutes. And I think now, Virginia, the pressure is really on Graf to make a quick start again, because it took her a little while, but just when the rains came for the second time, she seemed to me to be playing much more confidently. I agree with you. I think that uh, it took her a long time to get the feel. And even, you see, when she's hitting some of these shots now, she's not timing the ball very well. She's very much at sixes and sevens on this court out here. I think the wind has calmed down just slightly, but it's got much colder. The trouble is there are so many things out here that are totally out of your control as a player. So therefore, not only is it a great leveler, of two players but it also becomes a mental game who can cope with that feeling of being out of control better well let's just for those of you who have perhaps come in from the office and didn't see the earlier part of the match let's just remind us of who we are watching this is the holder of the title she's won it five times she's won it for the last three years she is outstandingly the world's number one player with a question mark over her head the question mark being the loss to Mary Pierce in Paris. What has that done to her confidence? It was only the second loss she had sustained in 1994. The other to Sanchez Vicario in Hamburg a few weeks earlier. With a hat full of titles, all those Grand Slam singles and all together the greatest player in the world since Martina Navratilova, who had that nostalgic return to the centre court yesterday. Let's look at her opponent, who's 30 years of age, Laurie McNeil, ranked 22 in the world, has been a quarter-finalist here, has enormous potential, but never really quite fulfilled it. She's almost apologetic about her own prowess, a very modest person indeed, who has beaten Steffi, though, in their nine meetings. She won the last of them. And the last of them occurred just a couple of years ago now. But this, their first meeting on grass. And I think we all felt that that offered a great chance to McNeil because she's a lovely volleyer, a Two lovely natural grass court player with a good serve. And she certainly has embarrassed Steffi today with some lovely volleying food. She's charged for whenever she could. And I think Virginia still, she's got now to believe in herself again because she started so beautifully. Can she find that form again? She is in good form. She's playing really very well considering the conditions. Uh, and in the last few weeks, she won the tournament up in Edgebaston, which would have boosted her confidence no end. In fact, she's won that tournament twice in a row. So as she's got a little bit older, she seems to have come to terms with the nerves that would always uh, come in and interfere with all her natural ability. She still has a, a few mistakes on the forehand side and she sometimes can get just a little bit shaky on the second serve but really she hasn't shown too much of that today she did look very nervous though when she had missed the break point to lead two love in the second set 
as if she feels that uh, Steffi is the one she's chasing and any sign that she might go ahead is a uh, fairly intimidating one minute thought. so ranked 22 in the world playing against the number one in the world playing here Laurie for the 11th time and graph for the tenth. so they're both very experienced and Steffi here with her usual support group and I think her mother's there in the front row of the box see if we can find her for you Heidi always a a loyal supporter of her daughter there's Heidi and that sitting next to Heidi is Michael Bartels the racing driver though not I think Formula One I'm told I'm not an expert in these things but he's a racing driver and Klaus Hofsass who looks after women's tennis Sorry. in Germany and to the right there just a little further to the right is uh, Heinz Guntart there's Heinz Guntart on the cap the white cap and he was telling me in this break that he was uh, very unhappy about the conditions being both windy and wet and he said you know I think we could have coped with one Change or the, the other but to have those at once was just bad luck it really is a horrible situation to come and defending the title with a really scary opponent and in very tricky conditions Steffi has never been somebody who sulks about conditions but she's really being put to the test today she's always been somebody who just tackles whatever is given to her and goes on without getting too indulgent in her own emotions about it her serve has been getting better as this match has uh, gone on that is uh, when it kept going so let's see if uh, Please. She can resume where she left off. So just to remind you of the score, it's 5-7, 3-2. And there's the Yes, lost the range of Steffi for the moment again on that forehead. Forty thirty. There, studying his notes at the back. Grant Kemp, Robin Webster. Game is gone. So just the fast start that she needed. under attack from Neil today. A recognised way of playing Steffi on a fast surface is to camp on the net if you're good enough as a volleyer 
against the backhand. Thirty long. Thirty fifteen. I don't think that was anything to do with the windy conditions. In fact, the wind, as Dina Wade was saying, has dropped considerably. It was really very windy when they began. And it was affecting Graf more than McNeil because of the high toss. Shorter ball than was intended. Perfect backhand pass. As usual, Steffi not quite as alert at the net. Forty thirty. surface still is a little bit treacherous on day two. Traditionally the sap in the grass of course leads to uh, a lot of skidding and sliding in the early days. And we've been a little bit short of drying sun this year. Advantage Miss McNeil. Okay, Miss McNeil. Draft <laughs> leads, four games to three, second set. First set, Miss McNeil. Well, all credit to McNeil to keep the pressure on Steffi with that excellent service game. Very solid serving from her. She seems to be much smoother on her service action than she used to be in the past, but I think. Uh, what Steffi has got to do is try to get a little bit ahead. You know, she's not anywhere near out of the woods here. There's so many balls that are awfully difficult to play. They're jerking at the ball still and they're getting short. Steffi's had to chase after balls which have been very short in the court, which are really almost what you would term as mishits from, from uh, Laurie. And just as we have a look at Laurie's serve, it's a nice, smooth. She launches herself forward so well and gets into position. Just a very easy movement. Nothing Time. rushed, but very speedy around the court. <laughs> Steffi served a much better game herself before. But she's got to rely on getting some cheap points this game. Four three. Love fifteen. Chip and charge. Well, that's another recognised method of getting 
the attack directed towards that backhand. There have been several balls of lorries which have just dropped deadly there. <laughs> That's an indication that she choked a little bit. It's always easy to do on that high volley. Steffi should want to charge forward there. Suggested to me she's a little bit unsettled still. It could easily, couldn't it, have been love 40. Thirty. Playing yes. a decisive part here, the ball stopping almost, and now she has to reach for the ball, which is further forward than she expected. So that the first ace today from the draft. Serving hasn't been nearly as good as it usually is. At one stage, she was serving just 38% of her first balls in. Game is ground. Graf leads five games to three, second set. But like the champion, she is coming through with the ace and the winning serve. Make it 5-3 been in worse strokes than this and survive. Fifteen all. Thirty fifty. Nice serve uh, that one. A little bit of slice on the pigment of the body.
Over to you. Fortunately, it is. It is allowed the luxury of a forehand. Perhaps the volley back to the backhand side would have been the one. Over to you. That was a good shot, and she was quick to spot that, and she got right under the ball and looked altogether more confident. So that's given her a set point. Spot third ace. I thought it was with me. Somehow she scoops that over the net. Excellent play from both of them. Advantage, Miss McNeil. <coughs> I think perhaps rather surprised how high that bounced. And again, it underlines how, though it's green and greasy and the ball will skid because of the sap in the grass, when it just bounces, it's firm underneath. Okay, Miss McNeil. Graf leads five games to four. Second set, first set, Miss McNeil. Well, she was tested and she came through. I'm very impressed with the way McNeil's handling herself in this match. She came up with uh, five out of six fantastic first serves, and the one she missed only missed by a hair. All in the corner, and she closes in so well into the net. So she really is uh, staying very calm, I'm sure underneath. Her mind is in an absolute turmoil, though. I mean, this is a big occasion. She's never done that well at Wimbledon. She's never really done as well as she should here because she should be one of the best of the grass court players in the world. Just that one quarter final, Mandy Cobra, it was who beat her. She certainly has uh, given Steffi matches where she's given her trouble and others where she's Time. been wiped out. And I always remember, in the U.S. Open in 87 in the semi-final, she had, I believe, a point to lead 5-3 uh, in the third set and couldn't quite make it. But when she plays well, it's absolutely Steffi's least favorite type of opponent. So there has been one set point, remember, already. Steffi now trying to complete the job on her own serve.
shot 15. Believe me, that was a world-class shot. Beautifully flighted backhand. Absolute instinct on hitting the right shot. Quiet, please. Not Thank 30. You. It's a perfect length, and Steffi finds a wonderful angle, and yet it's been anticipated. Thank you. Two break points. see Steffi query at all, so she's a little bit overwrought at the moment, of course a tremendously important moment. Games all. Five games all, and McNeil playing perfect grass court attacking tennis against somebody reluctant to do what she should be doing, as Virginia Wade has pointed out since the very start. She needs to come into the net herself. Five all. Interesting there, Virginia. She was chipping and charging. She can do that. And also, it was interesting that Laurie didn't want to hit that ball. She was begging it to go out. on the forehand and that one she hit absolutely magnificently but she needs to to get them past Laurie
15 seconds. Heart in mouth again, but this time, the right judgment. Her volleys have been short, which is effective on grass, and so close to the net. Again, Steffi doesn't really like to lob, but she was hanging over the net there. 30 all. Just a little bit of hesitation. There was a moment there when she wanted to go in on the last but one shot she hit and thought better of it. And then was in no man's land in mid-court for the final forced error. moment she's come up with a good the right shots there that running round to hit the off forehand to such an acute angle was exactly the right shot Games to five, second set, and by one set to long. Well, the tense faces on the front row there, all the Graf supporting club, and I'm sure Heidi, it's mum there. Mrs. Graf must be very cold. She certainly looks cold, and she's fairly philosophical when Steffi doesn't do well, but underneath it all, she must be absolutely not. Steffi is in serious trouble, isn't she, when she's being out rallied from the baseline by Laurie. Laurie has uh, served so well when she's had to, but what she is being allowed to do on Steffi's serve is she's being allowed to just put her racket on the ball and float it back deep because Steffi isn't coming in.
time. So a real test for the defense. Quiet, please. Quiet, please. Thank you. Five, six, and seven, seven. Having to come up with brilliant shots just to win one point. She's not even getting too much out of her serve. First service. into error by the quality of that return of a very deep second Thank serve you. which I thought actually dangerously long but it was all right Good job. Somehow Steffi managing to rifle one more. How lucky that Neil didn't follow in that excellent lob. Forty fifty. <laughs> A little bit of football there. <laughs> Sheer relief. Okay, oh, please, full goal. Thank you. 40-15. Games all second set, tiebreak. Well, at the best of times, tiebreaks are hazardous indeed for any player. And we'll see how the champion Please, feels. Please, ladies and gentlemen, about this one. Zero on the scroll. Steffi can do about it. Finding the foothold a bit treacherous. Now. 
all points have gone against the server. Neil, 2-1. Oh, yes. Three, two, Just managed gone. to connect a little bit earlier on that one. It was a pretty quick serve, 90 miles an hour. Good return. Still every point has gone against the server. Three, two. Centre court, the final last year, she was a set. Her brother, he was a 4 1 down in the final set. Two breaks then, and came through, but her tie breaks rather different. There's no time really to dig in. Three off. Double faults galore. And still, no one has won a point on the serve. Five three, Miss McNeil. What a brave serve that was, so deep. match point. She's done it! Well, so, 
Chris McNeil, 7 5, 7 6. And the crowd absolutely stunned at the same time, delighted with the play of Laurie McNeil who held firm when she might easily have folded. And a little tearful, it seems to me, there, Steffi. Not surprisingly. The match played in three stanzas. Ends with a sensation. The defending champion, the number one seed, the world number one, is out. Beaten by Laurie McNeil in straight sets. 7-5, 7-6 in just... An hour and 43 minutes of play.